Florida State is the next one on the board. And Florida State, the Seminoles, well, let's just take a look. Uh, five and seven last year is not good enough for Mike Norvell and that bunch. Their postgame win expectancy said that they should have been a six-win team, 6.01 and 5.99. Uh, their projected record this year, as far as SP Plus is concerned, is seven and a half wins. So anywhere from eight and four to seven and five, somewhere in between there. They are number 18 in the country in returning production. That's 75%. The defense is the biggest part of that because they're bringing back 80% on defense. That's number 13 in the country. This team, as far as why they did not get to a bowl last year, it was the offense, which you normally would not expect from Mike Norvell or a Mike Norvell team, but they were number 73 in PPA per drive. Let's uh, let's take a look at you know what we've got going on here. The new offensive coordinator is Alex Atkins. He was the offensive line coach, uh, but we do know that this is Mike Norvell's offense. Kenny Dillingham, of course, on over to Oregon to take over the offense for Dan Lanning, who is their new head coach. Quarterback Jordan Travis, the last man standing after the other guys all transferred out. Uh, going 5-2 and two in his last seven starts certainly helps in 2021. But again, you look at these year-long numbers, number 73 in rushing success, number 98 in passing success. you got to be better on offense overall. Their explosive rate, pretty good, number 37 in the country. Uh, you got four starting offensive linemen returning. You brought in three transfer wide receivers, including Pittman from Oregon. Uh, number 18 in points per scoring opportunity, but... But you only had uh, you were only number forty nine in number of scoring opportunities. That's drives inside the opponent's forty where you reach a first down. If if you were not going to score when you get there, I, I mean obviously it's a good thing that they were able to score. Number eighteen in points per scoring opportunity is great. They were able to finish drives. It's just getting there that was the biggest thing. They shot themselves in the foot so many times. I don't know how how often we saw second and long or third and long from this team. And that's just not a way to be successful overall. Looking at the defense, uh, Adam Fuller is doing things here. I mean, this defense was good last year. Number 30 in PPA per drive. Number 22 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, the defensive secondary was not good. Number 58 at that point. Uh, they gave up 6.47 yards per play in 2020. That was number 105 in the country. In 2021, they gave up only 5.19, which was number 30 in that spot. Now, remember, first season was 2020. It was the COVID year. They didn't even get a spring practice. You knew it wasn't, really good, uh, wasn't going to be good at that point. What is the defense going to look like without Johnson and Thomas? Those guys had 29 and a half tackles for loss, 18 and a half sacks. Uh, the defensive end, Jared Verse, who came over from FCS Albany, he looks like the real deal, but is he really one of those that just was hidden and he's just going to pop up and immediately be an All-American? I doubt it, but we'll see. I think he could be really good. I just, I'm not sure what to think of him. Uh, on top of that, you got four linebackers back with 400 plus snaps in 2021. You got four defensive backs with 521 plus snaps. That's five more that have over 200. Uh, experience is going to help this bunch improve from the number 93 passing PPA uh, defense in the country last year. They were not good against the pass. They are projected favorites in six games, seven of their games are projected to be within eight points, uh, whether favored or underdog roles. Let's talk about keys to the season here. 19 transfers out, 12 transfers in. This team looks a lot different than they did a year ago. The roster continues to be upgraded. That's good. They're up to number 31 as far as roster strength goes because it had taken a hit during the Willie days. Uh, they were 3-5 and five in one-score games in 2021. You can fix that by improving penalties per game, uh, number 82 in that metric, and then number 72 in turnover margin. You can see right there on the screen uh, with those there. But you can definitely improve. You Just don't beat yourself. You three and five in one-score games, you should have won more than that. Bottom line. The other key to this season is Jordan Travis. Like, has he improved as a passer? That's going to be a big key as to whether or not they can really compete this year because the defense certainly looks like they are good enough. Uh, I've got this team at 7-5 and five this year uh, to go over that 6.5 win total, and they're minus 130. They're juiced at that point. But I like them at 7-5. and five. Uh, I've got a loss to Syracuse in there, which, yeah, but I've also got a win over Florida. I've got losses in the middle of the year to Wake Forest, NC State, and Clemson. I've got a loss to LSU, but I've got them beating everybody else. And that includes a win at Louisville over Boston College, Georgia Tech at Miami, uh, Louisiana, and Florida. 
Like, I think 7-5 and five is good. This is a pretty rough schedule, but I think this is a good enough team to be able to get there. That's that's how I feel about them. So I, I do like them. I think they're going to be okay. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.